Hey guys, how are you going? So number one, my camera has had some manufacturing issues. So I'm just using my husband's phone. So I'm really sorry about that. Um, and number two, if you're wondering why my hair is often wet in my videos, it's because one of the precautions we take not to bring pathogens into our house is that we often shower when we get home. And so I don't really go out much other than appointments. So when I go to an appointment, I shower when I get home. And then when I get home, I vlog about it so I don't forget because I forget things. Um, I often video just for my own benefit as well. So, yeah. Um, so, a little update is that I have had a big flare-up in my neck. So, I've always had, I've had neck, really severe neck pain for the last seven years. And the worst of it lasted for about three years the first three years where it was really bad and I basically couldn't even sit up in my bed like I would have to lay on my side and shovel food in my mouth to be able to eat and my mum had to completely dress me and bathe me and brush my hair and wash my hair and I was very much completely bed bound um and that was for all different aspects of my health, but mostly because of my neck. And over the years with different therapies and stuff, it has been improving, but I still, it's still my biggest issue. And so lately I've had an increase in this feeling that it's hard to explain to someone who doesn't have EDS, but it feels like my neck keeps getting stuck. So it's the same idea as when my kneecap, for example, feels stuck. I kind of hold it straight in my leg. It clunks and it's kind of back in place and it feels better. So the feeling I get in my neck is kind of like a rocking issue. Usually anywhere along my neck, but most of the time it's like right at the top of the neck, base of the skull sort of area. And so to feel stuck and I kind of have to like flip my neck back and forth to try and crack it to get it feeling right and then when I does crack it helps relieve pain and nausea and dizziness and that general stuck feeling except for sometimes I can't crack it because everything just feels so loose so I'm kind of like Ooh, until it like cracks back to place um but also like it just comes back out again um, and it's not like subluxing I don't think it's just like millimeters sort of hey guys this is Mel from the future it's a couple of months in the future and it's kind of funny how I said oh pretty sure it's not subluxing because we recently um, were able to do the trip to Sydney to get an upright MRI and the upright MRI showed that's exactly what it's happening that um, each of my vertebrae, my C-spine, so C1 to C6, each of those vertebrae are subluxing um, quite significantly actually and it gets worse in both flexion and extension so when I'm looking up and when I'm looking down and <clears throat> um, when I'm looking up and down it is severe enough to compress my brainstem and my spinal cord which could be causing those symptoms that I talked about a little bit later in this video, like dizziness, tingling, nausea, all that sort of thing. And so subluxation is actually when the... So subluxation is when the vertebrae partially dislocates and then goes back into place. But I think the stuck feeling that I was getting was that the vertebrae was subluxing and then getting stuck and not going back into place. Which is probably why I was feeling like I needed to crack it and probably why when I did feel a massive clonk I had the ease of those symptoms. So I'm getting a lot better at not flicking my neck around and just kind of trying not to and just doing light stretches if I feel like I need to crack it um, and kind of deciding whether the, the symptoms are will be like whether it's beneficial for me to crack it or whether it's better to pop on my neck brace or just stretch or whatever so I'm getting better at learning to manage it but yeah quick update like when they measure instability in the neck they're measuring by millimeters um so it's not like 
my neck is completely like Frankenstein or anything, but like, um, yeah, that it, it just, it just goes back to where it was and feels stuck again. Um, and so that I'm just literally cracking my neck all the time when I don't have my neck brace on. And I try not to have my neck brace on as much as I possibly can. I try to go at least an hour a day without it on when I'm actually upright doing stuff, which is really hard. Um, but I try to do it so that I don't lose muscle, so that so I don't get muscle atrophy. Um, so I last night I was in a lot of pain. I I actually was in so much pain sleeping that I dreamt that snakes were biting my neck. But anyway, I. I also had a lot of tingling, like my whole face, my whole neck, down my arms, down my legs were all, had a huge increase in like tingling. So I wasn't really sure whether I should be wearing my neck brace more or less. So I talked to my physio and my chiro today and my chiro was kind of like, well, which feels better. And I was like, neck brace on. Um... But it, this neck brace doesn't actually support those kind of top two vertebrae. So it still gets stuck in the neck brace. And right now it actually is feeling stuck. And so I will take it out of the neck brace, give it a crack and put it back in. Even with the neck brace on, sitting like this in this position is still really painful. Because I have to like look down to look at the phone. And that causes tension on my neck. The physio has given me some strengthening techniques to do in my brace, which I'll show you guys another time. And we talked about my different options there. And the Cairo basically said, I really don't want to talk anymore, but the Cairo talked about there's three different stresses on the body. Um, emotional, chemical, physical. So... Obviously, we know chemical stress. I'm not getting the nutrients that I need, so we're working towards making that better. Obviously, there's the emotional stress of everything and the physical stress of everything. So, that when you feel stress, looking from where it comes from, like physical, emotional, or chemical. Um, and I suppose chemical can be hormones too. And so, he also said that... The right side of my neck was like completely rocked up, locked up, and I had my neck was actually had some rotation to the left side, so we did some dry needling and just some. He did some stretches. We didn't do any manual adjusting, and he did some adjusting with the activator, which is uh, safer than the manual adjusting. And um, he manually adjusted my first rib because that's always out. And um, yeah, so he also helped me show, he showed me what are uh, safer and more dangerous ways to move my neck when I'm trying to crack it, which helped me a lot because it helped give me more uh, confidence that I'm not going to hurt myself and something I also told him was that like I'm going to be really vulnerable with you guys is that I feel a lot of guilt and I have mentioned that before that I get in my head because I feel a lot of guilt and I want to make the best decisions for myself and I worry that I'm going to not make the best decision and then it's going to go badly and I'm going to feel guilty about it. And I feel like I have to do the best thing for myself all the time. So um, I get in my head about that. And we've been looking at treatment options of a halo vest and spinal fusion at the moment. And so I've been finding that very stressful. And I'll talk about that in another video. But um, something he said to think about is, all right. So if you're going to go with a treatment option, think about your treatment option and the reasons why you're doing it and kind of leave it there. Especially if it's non-invasive, then giving it a try, what harm can it really do? Thinking about, like, is there something more I can do? 
can I research more if the answer is yes? Well, research more if the answer is no. Well, then, you know, and I can't keep thinking, well, what about, what about, what about? Because then I'm just going to get in this loop that, um, that would just make me feel really exhausted, which is how I be feeling at the moment. And I'm sorry, this is probably not making a lot of sense, but I hope it's helpful. Um, and he also said, I can't think about what's the worst thing that's going to happen. I mean, it's good to think about your risks and evaluate all that sort of thing, but I can't think about what's the worst that's going to happen. And I can't put that on myself either. And um, I have been thinking that, you know, even though I need to think about all the risks and stuff, lately I've been trying to think about, I've been thinking about what's best that can happen. Like, so <laughs> I will talk to you more in the next video about all the decision making I'm doing or in future videos. I think I'll do a, what are my goals for 2020. It's February at the moment and I want to tell you guys what my goals are and stuff but there's a lot of things that I'm thinking about at the moment that I haven't told you guys about yet. So there's a lot of treatment options and stuff that I'm thinking about at the moment that has actually really been stressing me out but I haven't told you guys about it yet so I don't want to explain all of it just yet. So... In the future, I will do that. And something else really interesting that my Cairo mentioned is that the like the top of our spine, base of our skull, uh, has a lot of receptors in it, kind of similar to the inner ear. So our hips and our feet are what helps us to balance. But in our head, like in our body, our hips and our feet are what helps us balance. But in our head, it's different. It's our inner ear and like the area at the back here and I thought that was really interesting and it makes a lot of sense so I often get stuck in one side either the right side or the left side gets like stuck and a chiropractic adjustment will usually help uh, we only ever do a manual adjustment if I absolutely need to do one and we did actually do one a couple of I think a couple of treatments ago and um like, because my neck was just really, really stuck and really, really bad, causing me a lot of pain. And so the week after it um, was very, very painful. But then it kind of came good for a while. And, it, I mean, it, it doesn't last that long. So we try not to do it every time because then we'd just be doing it every time. Um, so we only do it when I absolutely need it. So we didn't do one today, but it makes sense that when it's stuck on one side and my head's kind of like sitting on a not so good angle, that I get dizzy and nauseous and off balance and I'm tripping over more and I'm more clumsy. It makes sense because it's kind of like if you're on a boat or going up a mountain and your ears get clogged and you feel all those things. And it also makes sense that I'll have the feeling of always wanting to crack my neck to readjust because if my brain's interpreting that that's all wonky, it wants to, uh, it wants a sense of equilibrium. So I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but it was really, really interesting for me. So also I don't ever get manual adjustments from either chiropractors, I just trust this one because he works with EDS and he only does them very 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 lightly so um yes just thought I'd add that and um yeah the other thing that my Cairo said was that it is not just easy for me to make decisions about my health because there are so much, there are so many unknowns, there are so many variables, and there's just so many missing bits of information that we simply don't know, which is something that we've been trying to narrow down a bit this year. 
2021, well, 2019, we started really trying to, in 2009, we started really trying to find answers, and we've been doing that, and this year we will actually be doing a lot of testing and a lot of trialing of things to try and rule out and narrow down um, some of those unknowns and some of those variables to try and figure out what we need to focus on. So again, I haven't told you guys a lot of what that's going to be, what that's going to look like. I will tell you in time, but just not right at the minute. So... Because there's kind of a lot to tell and I'm processing it all myself and going through it all myself and I am feeling actually incredibly stressed at the moment trying to organize it all and looking at it all and there's some big stuff to consider and um, some really big uh, decisions to make and um, so yeah so he said that I need to not be so hard on myself like yeah, so that is a goal of ours at the moment to try and um, have more testing and to try to know some of these unknowns and figure them out so that we know what to treat and where to go from here and what we need to spend our time and energy and money on because there's just honestly too many things going wrong with my body that we can't, we don't, we don't have the money to do everything or even anything but um all the time or the energy or the capacity so that's something we'll be working on and I will update you as that goes so yeah I'm not sure if this video is very worthwhile for anyone but I hope it helped you so I hope you guys are hanging in there and yeah, see you later.